So hello ladies and gentlemen and welcome to another Power BI video. This time we're going to talk about Power BI data marts. I actually asked you if you prefer the Gardner remake of the Power BI data marts video. Results were inconclusive, so I'm going to do the data marts first so I get it out of the way. So we're going to talk about what a Power BI data mart is, how much does it cost, who is it meant for, and uh, when should you use it, and then my final thoughts. So let's get started. So what is a data mart? Here's the thing, a data mart, in a technical sense, is basically a subset of your data warehouse. So data warehouse, you know probably that is this gigantic model that contains almost everything about your company. Well, they're difficult to use, so what you would do is get subsets of it and then do small models that business can use in their analysis. That's what it is. Is it the same for Power BI? I would say no. But before we get into what a Power BI data mart is, let's talk about how much does it cost. Up next, we look at the new self-service data marts capability included with Power BI Premium. So as you heard him said, Power BI data marts are included in premium and premium per user, both licenses. So I have actually seen online people getting a pop-up that says, Hey, this is a preview feature, so additional cost might occur after it's generally available. So use a, Power BI, a premium per user license trial to test it. So I recommend you to do that. Otherwise, it will be like going to the supermarket, buying a tomato, and having your supermarket owner tell you how much it costs a month later. Wouldn't make much sense, would it? So this is the same. Test it in a test environment, and then... When the costs are announced, and if you like it, then you decide if it's for you or not. Who is it for? It reduces the time it takes to do custom departmental reporting from weeks to minutes. And we're gonna show you how in just a few clicks, both business users and analysts can easily create and access their own mix of data from dozens of the most common data types and services. Now, they are saying that this is for business users and data analysts, and traditional data marts are not made for that, so that confused me a ton. Like, why would they say that this is for business users? Business users would not sit and build mini data warehouses. So Power BI data marts have to be something else, otherwise it just makes no sense. Let's talk about when should you use it, which maybe gives us another piece of the puzzle. If you want to do more advanced or specific reporting across a mix of data across different sources, you typically would have to wait for your data engineer to free up before they can help. And they'd have to build out some pipelines for ETL, and then provision and build out a central place to store all the data, among other things. And then they'd add a bunch of code and business logic in SQL. Now with data marts and Power BI, you can self-serve and bring in the data you want. Okay, so this was very, very, very confusing again to me. They were saying like, okay, if your data, if your IT department is busy, you can use data Mars to create models and, you know, do some service. It's a lot more clear when you go through the documentation where they are telling you when you're building models with Access Excel, you know, like business models, not data warehouse models. They're not talking about the traditional data mart. They're talking about Power BI models. And that confused me quite a lot. But then I think we got a clue on a Twitter conversation, actually. Somebody was talking to Microsoft employees about oh, what does it mean for me as a business user? I don't understand it. And this person actually said that, wait, because there might come a data visualization layer to it. And now suddenly things start making more sense to me. So if you think about it, a data mart, the way they release it today is a Power BI model. It's a Power BI file without the data visualization layer, right? So you have the preparation, you have the model, you have the, you know, the DAX, all that stuff. The only thing that you cannot do is visualization. If they later on add visualization to data mart, then you have Power BI desktop online. And you know that Microsoft is pushing everything online. They want to have everything cloud-based. So they are creating the online version of Power BI Desktop. And if that is true, it will explain why Aaron was so excited about 
this release because to me it made no sense. It's like this is another way to manage data. I was so excited about it. <laughs> There's nothing excited about it. But he said that it was the biggest release in three years. And if there is the beginning of the Power BI desktop online, I guess for him it would be a lot more exciting. And it would make sense why they are saying that it is for business users and data analysts. And it would make sense what they are saying, that this is meant to free work from the IT department because it's making you know, is basically doing Power BI work online. And all the stories that have been telling us would actually be coherent because the way they've been released today, it makes no sense. So I think that this is going to be Power BI desktop online. And if it is performant and works well, fine. But again, this is still premium. But think about it, data flows were premium too, and now they are available on a pro license. So. I don't know. Is it? You tell me. Let me know you see the same things as I do. So now, is this the best thing that happened to Power BI in the last three, four years? For me, it's not. Even if it is a Power BI desktop online, it's still not. And there is a reason for that. And let me explain myself. I have this book, The Data Loom, from Stephen View. Great book, great book. It has, they have some cold nuggets a little bit everywhere. Let me read you a few lines of it. It says, contrary to popular myth, we do not yet live in the information age. At best, we live in the data age, obsessed with the production, collection, storage, dissemination, and monetization of digital data. But data in and of itself isn't valuable. Data only becomes valuable when we make sense of it. Correct? So I, I couldn't agree more. We live in a data age where we're collecting trillions and trillions of data, but we're getting so little value out of it. Why are we getting so little value? He goes on and explains it. It's a wonderful book. So he says, we face a fundamental problem today. He starts talking about how a tool does not replace critical thinking and scientific thinking and all that stuff. You just, the person is still important today might change in the future, but for now, the human is still needed. The tool is just aiding you to do something. It goes and says, moreover, most of the tools that we rely on are so poorly designed that we are forced to spend hour upon hour learning the mechanics of using them. We struggle to find and memorize where functions hide within a labyrinth of many systems. We're forced to learn tricks to work around badly designed or missing features. On top of all of this, the tools change so often that just when we think that we've learned enough to get by, the cycle starts all over again. I could not agree more. I mean, it is very clear that Microsoft is in the data business. They are making money by storing your data and managing your data. But what is the point for you as a business user to have all the data stored if you are not getting value out of it? In my job, I mean, the information business, my customers pay me to get information out of the data store. And my job is quite hard. Because as Stephen says very well, it's just the amount of workarounds that I need to get my job done. And the amount of time that I'm losing just working around the tool is insane. I would love for a better visualization layer that is the one that actually gives value to all the millions and trillions of terabytes of data stored everywhere. It's fundamental for us to start moving into the information age and getting away from the data age. And the company that does that is going to get the coin for sure. When it comes to Power BI, there are some fundamental things that are needed that will make our life information workers easier. It would be to add more visuals. We need to be able to do modern visualizations. It's not possible today. Mobile version of Power BI still does not have mobile visuals, which to me is mind blowing. We need to they need to go through the property of the visuals, make sure they are cons consistent across, and then we have the properties that we need. The hacks that we need to do are insane. We need to create DAX measures to sort the column orders or matrix. No, please, that, that's insane. 
And Charticulator, for me, was like the light at the end of the tunnel, but it's a very early tool. Even if they make it generally available, it still has a lot of bugs, you know, it just crashes quite often. And for the things that I want to do, for the things that I visualize that I know I should be able to do, I never get there. It's, I'm always a little bit short. And if you go to GitHub Charticulator, you'll see I have like a thousand GitHub requests. And I don't know if the team is not staffed properly, but I want more. <laughs> I need more in order to be able to get all the trillions of data into information. And I hope that 2023 will be the time that we get that, because another data management tool is not needed. We have enough. I understand they want to build a desktop online, fine. But why is that a priority? Another data management tool. How about you give us the tools that we need to transform data into information? That was the value actually is of all those terabytes of information. So my two cents of all of this is that we do not need more data management and data storage tools. There are plenty to work with. Could it be more? Maybe. But there is more urgent problems in the data visualization layer, in the information layer that need to be addressed these up. I've been saying that for the last three years and hopefully this will be the last year that I need to say it. <laughs> but yeah, that is my two cents on data maps. What it is, where it's maybe going, I might be completely wrong, just, you know, be aware of that. <laughs> Let me know what you think. Let me know if you completely disagree or agree in the comment box. And I will see you again on Thursday with another video.